Hey there, it's Ella from Spline. We recently made this beautiful cube design that has a sphere in the center, and we want to show you how you can create this design to use in your next project. And for fun, we embedded this into a framer template to see how it looks, and honestly, we loved how easy this was to make and how impactful it looks on a landing page. So let's get started. Now the first thing we want to do is start a new spline file. So here I am going into spline and I'm going to delete the default rectangle and change the background color to black. Now the next thing I want to do is add a cube and I'm going to get that from the top toolbar and you can place it anywhere in your scene. And now I'm going to turn off this grid since we do not need it at this time. Then just quickly hit the reset button. This is just gonna reset our view. A great little trick here is if you right click on any object and hit reset position, it will make sure it's in the center of your scene. So something to keep in mind. Now we can increase the size of the cube. And I'll adjust the corner values just a little bit here. Nice. So moving on to the materials, the first material that I'm going to add is the gradient material. So I'm just going to change color to gradient. Now opening up gradient, you can see that there's lots of different values here, lots of different settings. You can change the offset, you can change the angle, even the type, but we're gonna stick with linear here. Selecting the black color, I'm going to change this to a blue color. Something very saturated and not too dark. And then I'm going to carry out that blue down the ramp of my gradient. I want to try it and simulate some sort of illumination here, giving every stop on this gradient a blue color. Nice. I think that's looking pretty good. And let's add a depth layer, which we like to call a 3D gradient. So quickly, I'm just going to adjust the position of this gradient. You can do that by using the handles in the viewport or by using the values here. I wanted to use this gradient to highlight more of the center of each side of the cube like this. Now I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. And I'm going to move the lighting layer on top of the depth layer to make sure that we can still see it. I'm going to change the opacity value here to 100 in the blend mode to overlay so it helps brighten up our cube a little bit more. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. Now we're ready to move on to that second cube. So in the top toolbar, I'm going to select a cube, place it anywhere and just hit reset position. Now let's increase the size here. I'm going to make this bigger than the first cube. So this is going to be about 500 by 15 across the board. And the first material I'm going to add is the glass material, making sure that this is at the bottom of the material panel. For glass, you can adjust things like the blur, the thickness, and the refraction. Play around with this to achieve different results. For this design, I am going to set the blur to 10, then the thickness to 19, and refractions to 10.4. Now for the lighting, let's make a quick adjustment. Let's change the type to physical, set a value of 100 in the opacity here, and we're gonna change the blend mode to overlay. Nice. On to the next material. Let's add a matte cap. Matte caps are awesome to add some shine to your designs. You can use the matte caps here in the spline library or another way to get matte caps is by going into the spline community, checking out the different designs there. A lot of them are using matte caps in a variety of different ways. For this video, I've used a matte cap from this design called Shine. I'll link it down below in the description. You can hit the remix button here and the file will be duplicated into your files in spline. And then you can open up the materials here and you'll see matte cap. And if you open that up, 
you can see this mat cap and you can download this easily just by hitting this download icon. So I'm using both of these mat caps in this design today. So let's quickly upload that mat cap that I've just downloaded from the Spine community. This one has more of like a diamond reflection to it. I'm going to change the blend mode to screen. and set the opacity to 75. And here in the rotation value, I'm going to set this to 125, but I encourage you to play around and find the best rotation for your matte cap. So for the next material, I'm going to be using another depth layer. Here, I'm gonna switch the black and white colors around now I'm going to use this as a mask to help create a nice shine effect in one of these top corners. So let's click on mask. And let's set this opacity to 80. Now let's add another matte cap layer. But this time we're going to upload this matte cap and change the blend mode to a screen. This just adds another layer of shine. For the next material layer, we added some noise. This creates a frosted glass effect. You can try the different kinds of noise here, but for this design, we use simplex. Now for this scale in the movement, we want this to be very, very small. So we have this at 0.05 and change the gray color here to black. And I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. So as you can see, it has this nice frosted effect, but it's a little intense, so I'm gonna change the opacity to 30. Looking good. Now to move on to the final element of our design, which is the sphere. So place your sphere anywhere in the scene and you know the drill, we're going to hit reset position. Now we can't see the sphere inside of the cube, so we have to click on the inner cube and go over to the visibility panel. And here beside sides, we're gonna pick back. Now we can see the sphere. So let's change the size here to 430 across the board. The first material I'm going to add is the depth layer. And I'm going to add some nice blue colors here, darker on one end and lighter on the other. And here I'm going to just quickly adjust using the handles in the viewport to create more of a gradient effect on my sphere. You can apply any different color, get creative here, make a green version, a pink version, whatever inspires you. So now that I'm happy with this depth layer, I just created a really light gradient. I'm going to adjust our lighting, increasing that value to 100 and changing the blend mode to overlay. I'm going to add a depth layer here. And for this depth layer, I'm going to again, apply some blue colors, but I'm just gonna have like a very saturated blue that goes off to a black color. Now let's set the blend mode here to screen and the opacity to 50%. So the next material I've added is a Fresnel layer and I'm going to change the white value here to black. Here I'm just checking out my sphere inside of my cubes quickly and I noticed that the highlighted area here is a bit too bright for my liking. So I'm gonna go back to the first depth layer that I've made and I'm just going to darken that white area just a little bit so it's not as intense. Okay, I think this is looking a lot better. One more thing that we can do is adjust our lighting. So here we have a directional light and I'm just going to change the position so it's on the side that I'm highlighting using the depth layer. Now say we wanna export this design to our website. 
A good rule of thumb to follow is adding a camera into the scene and using that camera placing and positioning it the way that you want that design to be framed on your website. Then go into export and ensure that that new camera is selected. And here in export, you can play around with a variety of settings. So clicking on play settings here, we can turn off the logo or stop things like orbit or pan from happening or my favorite turn on on hover which creates this light orbiting effect when you hover over your design i really love it for a nice hint of interactivity so let's add some interactivity to this design how about every time the user hovers over this design with their mouse that sphere on the inside changes to a lighter color to do this it's really easy so let's select a new state for our sphere and i'm going to change all of the colors in the bottom depth layer to just be a lighter version of themselves and a little more in the turquoise world Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to apply the event to the cube since that's the object that is on top. And I'm gonna select a mouse hover event and add my transition targeting the sphere and making sure I'm going from base state to state. And now we can hit play mode. And as soon as we hover on the cube, the sphere inside is changing to that lighter blue color. Pretty cool. Now when it comes to exporting this, you can easily code free embed this onto your website by copying the embed, which you can just copy this embed or copy Spline Viewer, which is more of a customizable embed. Now to add this to the framer template here, I added an embed component to the landing page. Then I pasted that embed that I copied from Spline into the component and voila, it's embedded into framer. If you want to learn more about bringing 3D into your web design, we have some tutorials down below in the description, so make sure to check those out. All right, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. We hope you liked this little design that we just created, and we're excited to see how you might use a design like this in your next project. All right, see you in the next one. Bye.